Okay, buffer overflow. Okay, so uh, before we get to the kind of technical details, let's just try to have like a scenario in our mind where this sort of thing could actually come up. Um, okay, suppose you are surfing the web, you come across some uh, place and they ask for information. Okay, so they give you a form, a web form, and you have to fill in some information. Now you hit return, what happens to this information? It goes to the web server. Okay, the web server parses out the information and does something with it. All right. So let's suppose there's a field there where you uh, enter your name. Okay. Uh, when this name gets back to the web server, the web server parses that information out, puts that name into an array, right? A character array for your name, uh, and we'll call that array buffer. Because uh, we have buffer overflows, not array overflows. So it's a buffer. Okay, so we'll put it in this buffer. And suppose it does that without checking the length of the input data. I mean, every array can, you know, can handle a certain uh, size of uh, data. Okay, so it's allocated a certain amount of space for names. It didn't realize there were Indian students out there that have 300 letters in their name, and it only allocated 100 letters for names. Okay, so um, what happens if someone puts in 300 letters for their name and then tries to put that into a buffer that only holds 100 characters? What's going to happen? Come on, who's the Java programmers out there? What happens in Java if you take an array and you try to put more data into it than you've allocated? Then there's not a real exception. It gives you an exception, okay, and it won't let you do that. How about C programmers? Any C programmers out there? Okay, you have an array, you allocate 100 elements, you try to put 300 in it, what does it do? It puts 300 in there, okay? You know, C, C is a real, you know, man's programming language. It assumes you know what you're doing. It assumes you meant to do that. Java, it's like, you know, it's like watching over you. It's like your mom's there watching over you, make sure you don't get in trouble and do anything wrong, okay? But a lot of code is written in C, okay? So it's not going to, uh, you know, it's going to allow you to make these kind, kinds of mistakes. Okay, so what happens when you overflow that buffer, when you put too much data into that buffer? Well, we'll see that can cause problems. Okay, it can actually open up uh, potential attacks that Trudy could do. Okay, if that's the case, suppose that's the case, that this particular overflow actually opens, if there's an overflow and it actually opens up an attack for Trudy. Who can attack your system? Anybody. Anybody's got an internet connection. They can go to your web form, they can enter information, and they can potentially uh, do damage to your system. So, I mean, it's really a serious issue in you know, at least some scenarios. Okay. Uh, okay, skip that. Okay, now, um, suppose, you know, you this is the buffer, okay, where Trudy's putting her name, right? And you've allocated 100 elements, okay? And, and there it is, and that's where it ends. Now what happens if he puts more stuff in there? Well, it starts overwriting things that live farther out here in memory. And in some cases, you know, there could be something important out here. Suppose there's a flag out there, and suppose that flag determines something really important, like whether you're authenticated or not, okay? I mean, this could be username and password and then authentication, you know? Well, you know, you do a bunch of calculations based on password and hashing, the password and salting it, you know, comparing it and all that, but ultimately that decision comes down to a single bit. <laughs> Either true, you are authenticated, or false, you are not authenticated. So if I can find that location, or if I have a chance to overwrite that location, I could overwrite the zero for false and turn it into a true a one, and I would be authenticated, although I don't know the password, I don't have the right thumbprint or whatever, okay? So this can actually happen. There's sort of a form of the buffer overflow where, where this occurs. It's not the most uh, uh, sort of common form of the attack. Here we go. Got that. See, we overwrite. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, there is a form of the buffer overflow, which is actually very similar to this, but this is not the most common uh, form of attack. So we, we have to dig a little deeper to kind of look at the uh, typical way buffer overflow uh, is actually used in, in attacks. Okay. Um, oh, let's go back here. Yeah, okay, so I forgot to mention this. Uh, okay, so here's, you know, here's a little snippet of a program. What happens when this code is executed? 
Well, what's the problem here, first of all? Okay, we allocated 10 elements for this buffer, right? And we decided to write something to buffer element 20. Okay, well, where's buffer element 20? It's out there somewhere, okay, but it's not something I allocated and reserved for this particular buffer, right? So what happens when I try to put something in that position? Well, again, it depends, right? If you're a Java programmer, nothing happens. It just gives you an error, okay? But if you're a C programmer, it assumes you knew what you were doing and you intended to do this, so it tries to put, you know, 37 in that location. Well, what was in that location? I don't know, you know, maybe there was some important data for my program in there. Now my program's going to be screwed up and it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. Maybe there's some system data there, or system, you know, is using that location. Then it's going to be severe, right? Probably the system will crash. Okay, maybe there's nothing important there and I can overwrite it and it works just fine. This is what's maddening when you write C, C code, right? You get these memory leak kind of errors and you can run it a hundred times on your system and test it and it works just fine. You give it to somebody else and it crashes. So it drives you nuts by tracking these things down. But it depends, okay? You don't know. You don't know until you, until you try here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so, yeah, so back to the buffer overflow. Okay, in order to describe the attack, we have to look a little bit closer, you know, memory, how it's laid out on the, uh, in modern processors and how it's used. Okay, so our code, when we execute our code, it's going to get loaded into memory, okay? Now, when we compile our code, there's a code, right? Okay, there's a certain amount of code, and we know exactly what that is and how much space that's going to take to execute and so on. So we reserve space for that in, this, in the uh, so-called text section. Okay, and notice there's a kind of a subtlety here. The way I've got this set up, I've got the low addresses up here at the top and the high addresses down here at the bottom. I do that for a reason. You'll see it in a second here. Um, but anyway, the text information represents code. Okay, now when you come, if you have statics uh, data of compiled into your code, we know the size of that. Right? We know the size of that at the time it's compiled. So that will go into the so-called data section, okay? appropriately named. Now, sometimes you don't statically define data. right? You have an array that you allocate dynamically as the code runs, because you don't know how big your, the space you're going to need, so you allocate it as the code executes. Okay, in C, how do you do that? How do you dynamically allocate code? Malloc, calloc, those things, okay, you allocate space. So that sort of stuff goes into the heap. So we reserve space there, okay? You know, it, it can grow as needed in order to, uh, to, to uh, take care of our program. Okay, finally, kind of the most interesting is the stack. Okay, the stack is used sort of for everything else. It's kind of like a catch-all, kind of like, a, call it like scratch paper. You know, as your program's executing, it's going along and it realizes, oh, I need a little bit more space for this, or this, that, or the other thing. Stack. We'll use the stack for that. Uh, okay, and the way I've got it set up here, the stack is going to grow up from the bottom. Okay, so kind of as you think of a stack, you add more stuff, it goes up. Uh, and we have to keep track of where the top of the stack is, and that's the stack pointer, uh, SP here. Okay, in particular, some things that go on the stack are parameters to functions and return addresses. Okay, that's important. Uh, okay, so let's look at a simple example here. We've got our C code, right? Here's our main, okay? Doesn't do much. Calls a function, okay? And here's the function. Doesn't do much either. Okay, but the point is, when you call a function, you're going to that function, you do whatever the function does, so what do you do when the function's over? You have to return. You have to go back and pick up execution where you left off. So you have to know where to come back to. That's the so-called return address. Where do we return to when the code is done? Okay, so we're going to use this stack for various things, including local variables uh, and return addresses and parameters. Okay, so when we call this function, stuff that gets pushed on the stack are the parameters to the function in reverse order. Okay, so we put the B on there first. Uh, then we put the A, uh, keeping track right with the stack pointer. Uh, then we put the return address. Okay, we're calling a function, so we're going to have to know how to get back to this location when we're done. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, 
call the function. Once we get to the function, we realize, aha, we need some extra space here for this buffer, so we'll put that on the stack. We'll reserve 10 characters here on the stack for that buffer. Okay, now you do whatever you do there. Uh, and when you're done, you pop off the return address and it tells you where to go back to pick up execution from the main program, okay? Okay, now think about it. Uh, in the example we talked about, Trudy could put information in like a name and it would get put into an array. Okay, now suppose it gets put into this buffer, right? Trudy can put information into that buffer. Now what happens if she puts 10 or fewer characters in there? No problem, okay, we've got space for that. What happens if she puts more than 10? Where does that stuff go? Where's that extra stuff go? Well, the high addresses are down here, right? So it starts filling up this way. If you put too much stuff in, it starts overwriting the stuff down here in the stack. In particular, it overwrites return address. Oh, that could be bad. Okay, so let's look at that. Suppose the buffer uh, overflows here. You know, just like before, we push the parameters on the stack. We push the return address on the stack. We push the buffer on the stack. Then when we actually execute the code, the buffer gets too much stuff in it, it overflows, overwrites the return address, maybe other stuff. Now what happens when we try to return? Mm -hmm. the code's done. I don't know, whatever's there, that's where we return, <laughs> okay? So we end up at some uh, essentially random location and what happens? Program crashes, okay, almost surely you're gonna crash because you're in an inconsistent state. Bad things, uh, bad things happen. Okay, so from Trudy's perspective, what do you think? Good thing, bad thing? Not bad, okay, I mean, making, it, you know, the, the, this thing crash could, could you know, it's, it, that's okay. Um, you know, in practice, if you're talking about the web form case, you know, you make it crash, what have you really accomplished? It's probably just a thread, you know, it's running a bunch of different threads, handling every user who's uh, connected at that time, and you kill one thread. Big deal. You haven't really accomplished very much, right? Can you do better? Yeah. Since it doesn't matter much to kill a thread, you can kill a bunch of threads and figure, change the variables to figure out what they do. Like, did that work? Uh, you know, you have to make a connection, right? Yeah, in order so to submit be... form, su submit something on the web form, so you could kill that particular thread. I don't know what else you could really. So you reconnect and then kill it in a different, like put kill it with different information until you find something that doesn't kill it. You could, okay. You could actually do something like that, sort of trial and error, okay, and see what happens. We can do better, okay. So mm -hmm. we have a better plan than that. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. But we can even be more devious here, okay. 